Oop, there's fish. Yeah. Might be my first triploid trout of the day. Keep pressure on him. Just a little guy. Hoping for something bigger for my first triploid. Today I'm up on Rufus Woods. Looking for triploid rainbows. This guy might not be a triploid. Let me see if he's been clipped. Uh, he's been clipped. He's a triploid. Just a little guy though. So he's missing his adipose fin. Hopefully we find a bigger one than this. To start you can see the adipose fin's gone. Ooh, there's one right there. <laughs> Sometimes you can find these. Are you still there? Oh yeah. These triploids will be hanging out uh, along these rocks here. Sometimes after they've spread out, I dump them in here. It's not bad. Pretty one. They really seem to like that orange maglet. The best. All right, pretty fish. So these triploids, what they do is they, either they pressure shock or heat shock the eggs, which causes them to retain an extra set of chromosomes, which makes them sterile. And uh, that usually results in the females getting quite a bit bigger because they aren't investing all the energy in gonad development. Off the hook, I'm just using barbless hooks today. And you can get some really big fish. There's that triploid. You can see he's got his adipose fin clipped. He's got a little bit of a swore there. He's been hit by something. Pretty fish though. In good condition. Actually, go ahead and troll along the shoreline here and see if we can find any more. You can troll really tight to the rocks, especially in a kayak. Get those crankbaits or whatever you're trolling tight to those rocks. That's why I like crankbaits because you know you run things like spinners or spoons it hang if it hits the rock it's gonna just snag or a lot of times if you're running crankbaits they're just gonna bounce right off the, the rock. There's one. Yep. Got that one. Well, always on that orange uh, maglet every time. That's the color they want today. That's about the same size. Oh, he's off. There he goes. I'll swing back through there and try again. Should see if I have another orange color. I have another maglet that has an orange butt, so I'll try changing that out. Maybe that'll be enough. We can get a double going. So the reason I run single point barbless hooks on my plugs when I'm up here doing this triploid fishery is because the tribe and the state both have rules that if you catch fish on bait, every fish caught on bait counts towards your limit. And uh, a lot of people ignore that rule because here the limit is two, so people like to catch and release the smaller triploids and you know you'll pretty quickly hit your limit of two if you're following the rules most people do not follow the rules here many guides included but uh, i do follow the rules because i want to set a good example and even if i don't agree with rules i still, I still follow them <laughs> right um so yeah that's why i run barbless no bait no scent because then I can come up here, I can catch a bunch of trout and catch and release all day and do that legally. The orange one that's been getting hit, and we got a brown one with an orange butt. So maybe, maybe we'll have a little better luck picking some up. We'll see. Fish, fish. On the turn. Got them on turn. Sweet. Now there are wild spawning rainbow in this section of the river too that spawn up below Grand Coulee Dam and in the Spielen Creek. 
Those can be really fun to catch too. Ooh, this is a nice ice trout. Really nice ice trout. Come here, buddy. Whoa! <laughs> now he won't go. That's also the nice thing about plugs is, you know, your other plug's not going to sink to the bottom and get hung up. Wow, that's a big one. Nice fish. All right, so that's why people come here is these big fat rainbows. This sort of be the average size, two to three pounds. <laughs> They're pretty energetic too. Okay, boy, that orange maglip is king, king today. It's like the only lure catching fish. Now, I don't eat trout a lot because I don't really enjoy the flavor of rainbow trout, but I definitely would not want to eat these triploids. I know that sets me apart from a lot of people, but my rationale behind that is they raise these fish in net pens that are scattered along the Columbia River here. So those these fish that are, you know, four pounds plus, 99% of them are just raised on pellets right up to that weight release. So it's basically like eating farmed farmed fish. When you cut them, they, they'll cut bright red because of the additives in their food. Um, and a lot of people enjoy eating them, but I, I simply just don't. It's a personal choice. I just don't like eating farmed trout or salmon. Oh, there was a bite. Just didn't get him. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Every time I go through it. It's crazy. Not on the other one, though. Just this one. They want orange today. Orange is all they will have. Ooh. Head thumping. If I lose this lure, I'm just going to pack it up and go home for the day. You got just a little two pounder. <laughs> so I'm going to just bring him in. Just a, just a dink. <laughs> huh. See you later, buddy. There he goes. So these fish pretty quickly figure out where they can sit and ambush and find food resources. I mean, they're not stupid. Um, so they'll they'll find rocky outcroppings and tuck up against those where there's some current passing nearby. And that gives them the opportunity. They can sit there and as food comes down stream through the current, they can dart out and grab it like they're darting out to grab my lure. And so oftentimes I'll do better trolling relatively tight to shore um, and, you know, looking for anywhere where there's little drop-offs and ledges and points sticking out. Um, and that's where I'll tend to do best trolling for them. Now, a lot of the bait anglers just go and hang out right between the bank and the net pens where these fish are released from and they'll just anchor up and drop bait straight down and catch fish that way. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, got one. I like got one on the something besides the orange. He was going crazy back there. It sounded fat when it was jumping back there. Taking a little bit of line. Yeah. Healthy rainbow. Oh, well, that's a chunky trip. <laughs> He's even tagged. Check that out. He's a tagged fish. You can see he has a tag sticking up by his dorsal fin back there. Uh, I don't think they do prizes or anything for these tribal fish, but um, you can harvest, if I harvest this fish, I could turn that tag back in and they get some data on it, but I'm just gonna let it go. 
Whoa, there's a big fish. Yeah. We got double gun. <laughs> That's a monster. Line peeling off on that one. I don't know if he's just wrapped up in his other rod or what the deal is. They're just smashing him on the troll though. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, it's so huge. This would be a good fish. Wow. Toad. He's a chunkster. Still have one on that run. It's so much fun getting doubles. Double rainbow. What does it mean? Awesome. <laughs> well, that's one heck of a way to end the day. Nice double rainbow on maglips. Some baddies. Awesome. Alright, let's get these guys back in the water and on their way. There's fatty number two. Awesome. See you later, bud. Well, that's going to do it for me. I'm going to call it and head in. It's always fun to end on the double. I'll put links to the maglips that I was using today, and I'm just using medium power rods with 10 pound monofilament and clipping in on a dual lock and flatlining 55 feet behind me. That's all. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. And just remember, it's smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.